Hello everyone, today I'd like to show you the progress on the development of my heat pump. Now if you haven't seen the previous heat pump video, I advise you to watch that first, so you are up to speed on what's going on here. Also, if you like background information on all my projects, then you should seriously consider becoming a Patreon for early access and nice extras. So a very special thanks goes out to all my Patreons, because their support helps a lot. So compared to the previous heat pump video, the biggest changes are that I now have my groundwater pump hooked up to the heat pump to supply or remove heat from the system. After it exits the heat pump, the groundwater flows into a ground infiltration circuit. I added a temperature control unit so that when the temperature on the groundwater evaporator side gets below freezing, the compressor shuts off and this valve closes so no more refrigerant can flow into the evaporator. This all is to prevent the heat exchanger from freezing into its disassembled state. I also added these combined vacuum pressure gauges. Because these plate heat exchangers have a maximum pressure rating of 20 bar, I added a pressure switch, so that when the pressure on the condenser side becomes too high, the compressor will turn off. When the pressure drops, the compressor will be started again. However, this type of compressor will not start when the pressure difference between the inlet and the outlet is too high. So I added a one-way valve and a bypass solenoid valve. This valve is opened for the first 3 seconds by this timer relay when the compressor is started via this solid state relay. The opening of this valve equalizes the pressure on the inlet and outlet side so that the compressor can start. Then when the 3 seconds have passed the solenoid valve closes and the refrigerant flows through the one way valve into the condenser. This bypass system is more or less the same system I use for my hydrogen generator and compressor unit. I also added these pumps. This one pumps water through the condenser side. This one was supposed to pump groundwater through the evaporator side, but it's not able to pump enough water through the evaporator, which will cause it to freeze up. So I'm planning to reduce the output of this pump, because it now pumps around 4.5 cubic meters of water per hour, which is way too much because in the evaporator it now only has a delta T of 1 degree Celsius. And this pump now uses around 800 watts, which is way too much and will bring the total efficiency down by pumping all that excess water through the evaporator. So I will now give a demonstration where the heat pump will remove heat from the groundwater and pump it to the condenser side where it will be removed by the water that's being pumped from and to this 200 liter water barrel. But before I'll show you that, I would like to clarify something to you all. Now it has been a while since I've uploaded a video and that's because I had to do some projects that are too much off topic for this channel, like making doors and windows for the workspace and other stuff in the garden. But also after my last video I had to go on digging the bunker to fill the container completely so it could be taken away. I'm also customizing a guitar. Also I had to repair the solar panel, because when it started freezing, my stupid mind forgot to put antifreeze in the system. I'm also building a monster of a wood shredder, and a chicken rotisserie barbecue, of which there will be a video later. During all this, it was cold and pouring rain almost every day for months. At some point I was working in here when it was minus 5 degrees Celsius, and I was thinking to myself, what am I doing? So now the workspace is nicely closed off, I can at least heat it next winter, and hopefully keep the videos going. So now let me show you how I fill the system with the right amount of refrigerant. Ok, so first it needs to be vacuumed down to remove all the air. So let's start the vacuum pump. Ok, so that is done. So now I will hook up the propane tank.
and let some propane flow into the system. So it's now filled with some propane and now we can start the water pumps and the compressor. Now by opening this valve gas will be sucked in and by opening this valve gas will be pumped back into the tank. This way I can add the right amount of refrigerant. So in the previous heat pump video I already showed how the superheat method works so I'm not going to explain that again. But anyway to determine the right amount of refrigerant I use this app. Here I fill in the water supply temperature on the evaporator side. WB stands for wet bulb and here I fill in the water supply temperature on the condenser side. I put it on Celsius because I will not punish myself with the inferior measurement system. So then you can press calculate, then it gives you the target superheat. To measure if I have the correct superheat I have a temperature sensor here before the refrigerant enters the evaporator and one temperature sensor here where the refrigerant exits the evaporator. The temperature difference or delta T between these two thermometers need to be equal to the superheat temperature given in this app. So now the right amount of refrigerant is in the system so it is now time to measure how many watts are being pumped from here to here. To do that we need a flow meter, an input thermometer and an output thermometer. Then we can calculate the amount of watts this way. Grams per second times 4.19 joules per Kelvin times delta T. So 800 liters per hour is 800,000 gram per hour divided by 3600 seconds is 222.222 grams per second times 4.19 joules per Kelvin is 931.1 joules per second times a delta T of 4.1 degrees and here I added 0.3 degrees to compensate for the temperature bias of these two thermometers. So 931 times 4.1 is 3817.51 watts, so around 3.8 kilowatts. So I'm quite happy with the result because the compressor only uses one kilowatt. Of course the water pumps also need to be taken into account, but let's not ruin this success with critical thinking. Okay, so the plan is to replace these heat exchangers for ones that can handle a higher pressure so I don't need this whole pressure switch system anymore and then I can go to a bit higher pressure so the condenser temperature also becomes higher which is nice because I want it to be around 40 degrees Celsius so I can hook it up to the central heating of my house. I also want to replace this compressor for a variable output compressor so the heat pump can just work at its required performance and not shut off and on all the time. But these compressors are quite expensive, so maybe I will build my own. And I need to increase these pipe diameters to decrease resistance. So in these diagrams you can see how it is hooked up at the moment, but please be aware that this is not the final version. So eventually the plan is to use this heat pump to heat or cool my house, and use the residual heat to heat up the hot tub or heat a boiler for warm tap water. Also when I've heated the tub in the winter and we don't have plans to use it in the next couple of days, I can pump the heat from the tub to my house or the boiler instead of letting the heat just disappear into the environment, which is all very efficient. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and thanks again to all my Patreons. Please like, share and subscribe and see you next time.